Let's understand about the distribution of iron ore in India. The this iron ore in India has been divided into four belts. Number one, we have Odisha Jharkhand belt, which is here. Second one, we have Durg Bastar Chandrapur belt, which is here in the state of Maharashtra and Chhattisgarh. Number third belt, we have Baleri Chittadurga Chikmagalur belt, which is there here in Karnataka. And number four belt, we have Maharashtra Goa belt, which is there in Maharashtra and Goa. Let's understand the different type, different mines which are there in these wells. If we go in the first uh, belt, that is Odisha Jharkhand belt, here we have Mayur Bhanj mine, which is there in the state of Odisha. In the second belt, we have the two main mines, that is Dur, which is there in Chhattisgarh, Bailadila, which is there in the Bastar district. It comes under, uh, this area comes under the Dur, Bastar, Chandrapur belt. Third belt, we have in Karnataka, we have a very famous mine, which we call as a Baleri. And then near the coast, Near the western part, we have this Kudremukh mine, which consists of very high grade of uh, hematite iron ore. And this Kudremukh mine, uh, whatever we extract the iron ore from here, is being exported to the other countries. So it's a hundred percent export is being there. Now let's talk about the other minerals like distribution of copper. When we talk about uh, copper, copper is non-ferrous mineral. So if we compare the um, availability of uh, non-ferrous minerals in our country, we don't have very good amount of non-ferrous mineral. But uh, copper is available in three different states in India. That is in Madhya Pradesh, where we have Balaghat mines. Second state, we have Jharkhand. In Jharkhand, we have Sindhubhum district. And then in Rajasthan, we have Khetri mine. Copper is, is a very good conductor of heat and electricity. It is being used in the electrical appliances as well as it's being used in the uh, vessels and to make the wires, electrical wires. Now, another mineral we have, non-ferrous mineral, we have bauxite with us. If we talk about bauxite, bauxite is also available in uh, three different areas in our country. Number one, we have in Orissa. Orissa has a maximum amount of bauxite available in India. In Orissa, we have a district which we call as in Koraput district. This Koraput district we have, which is there here, where we have uh, the mine which we call as in Panchpat Mali mine. Then we have uh, bauxite there in Madhya Pradesh. We have Amarkanta Plateau. We have Kachni. We have Michael Hills and then in Chhattisgarh we have Bilaspur. You can refer this thing for the map. Now let's talk about another mineral which we call as a mica. Mica is a kind of a mineral which is dielectric in nature. It, um, it traps the heat. It's a good uh, it is it is resistance to the high voltage, and uh, it uh, it is being used in the electrical appliances. If we talk about the distribution of mica in our country, we have maximum amount of mica in the area of Bihar and Jharkhand. The name of the belt we call as in Kodarma Gaya Hazari Bagh belt, which is also been called as a northern part of the Chota Nagpur plateau. The second area where we have mica is in Rajasthan, that is in Ajmer and Pewar. And then we have in Andhra Pradesh, Nellore district. 
If we talk about the mining, we have different types of mining, types of mining which has been done in our country. The number one type of mining, we have the open pit mining. It has been also been called as an open cast mining. You can see from the picture here, uh, the mining has been done from the uppermost layer of the earth. Another type of open pit mining, we have query. Query is also the same type of open pit mining only. The only difference is that open pit mining, they produce the building material uh, and the query they produce the marble and stones and etc. Another type of mining we have underground mines with the shaft, which we call as in shaft mining, where a deep hole is being done. There is one more type of mining which we call as an rat hole mining, which is very common in the area of Meghale. This type, in this type of mining, a very small amount of hole is being done. And this is a totally an illegal type of mining activity which is being done in the area. Now if we talk about the mining, impact of mining on the health of miners and the environment. Now when we do the mining activity, the dust and fume is been inhaled by the miners and they become vulnerable to the pulmonary diseases. Another impact is the risk of collapsing of the roof of the mines, especially with the coal mines. So this causes a lot of damage to the miners. Sometimes the water resources they also get contaminated by the by the mining activity. People they dump the waste and slurry, which leads to the degradation of the land, soil, and that is the reason that we need to have some type of strict safety regulation to implement the, the laws to con conserve the environment. Otherwise, this mining activity will become as a killer industry. Now, why, why conservation of mineral is in need of NR? This is a very big question with us. The conservation of mineral, we, we need to do because the formation of the minerals the geological time period is very fast. We are consuming more amount of mineral what is being available to us by the help of the nature. If we are not going to conserve it, our future generation is going to get affected by this. That is the reason that we need to conserve the mineral. Now if we talk about the energy resources, the energy resources, they are being classified into two. One is conventional, another one is the non-conventional energy resources. If you compare both the resources, conventional energy resources are those resources which we have been using for the last many, many years. So as we have been using for the last many, many years, we have all type of technology to harness these resources, these energy resources, and uh, they are generally non-renewable in nature except water. So they are getting depleting day by day. If we talk about the non-conventional energy resources, these are the resources which we have been using for the last few years. Like for example, we have solar energy, wind energy, they are abundance, they are renewable in nature. And apart from these, these are the energy resources which do not create any kind of pollution and the effect to the environment. So it's a demand to shift from the conventional energy resources to the non-conventional energy resources. If we talk about the conventional energy resources, the most common fuel which is used in the river in India, we have firewood and the kettle dung pay. Now these two are being commonly used in the rural area, but this, the usage has been discouraged. The reason being is that the, if we use the firewood, it uh, it decreases the percentage of forest, it do create a lot of pollution. As far as the kettle dung cake is being considered, instead of using for the uh, fuel, if we use this kettle dung cake it, uh, for the manure, this will increase the fertility of the soil. 
So we discourage, we try to discourage usage of firewood and the kettle and cake. The most important conventional energy resource we have coal. Now, if we talk about the coal, coal is most abundantly available fossil fuel in India. It provides maximum amount of the thermal energy, thermal electricity in India. It is highly dependent on the coal for meeting its commercial energy requirement. And this coal has been formed by the compression of plant material over millions of years. If we talk about coal, coal has been found in a variety of forms. We have uh, two varieties of coals. One is on the basis of the carbon content, another is on the basis of rock series. If we talk about the carbon content, we have four types of coal. Number one, peat, lignite, bituminous, anthracite. Peat is a very inferior quality of coal. Lignite is a light brown color coal. It's not, it is again not a very good quality of coal. But this has been available in the area of Tamil Nadu. And we have been using for the generation of the electricity. Bituminous coal has been called as an industrial coal because this has been used in the industry in the maximum quantity. Anthracite coal is the high, finest quality of coal. Another category of the coal we have on the basis of rock series, we have Godwana coal and the tertiary coal. If we talk about the Godwana coal, Godwana coal is around 250 million years old. And tertiary coal is around 55 million years old. So if you compare both, uh, Godwana coal is a very good quality of coal as compared to the tertiary coal. Let's see the distribution of uh, coal in our country. Now, Godwana coal is basically available in the area of the Damodar River Valley, especially the area of West Bengal and Jharkhand, where we have Ranganj, Bokaro, Sharia, and Godavari, Mahanadi rivers are also there where we have good amount of coal deposit. Tertiary coal is basically available in the northeast states of Meghalaya as well as in Arunachal Pradesh. Another type of conventional energy resources we have petroleum deposit. Now, petroleum deposit uh, is also been called as in the petroleum industry is also been called as a nodal industry because petroleum is used in many of the industry. Right. And uh, this, uh, if we talk about the availability of petroleum in our country, we have mainly, majorly three major areas where the petroleum is available. One is there in Assam. Assam is the oldest state, first state from where we started the extraction of petroleum. Uh, Digboi, from where we, we started the extraction of petroleum. Digboi and Neher Katia is there in Assam. Then we have uh, in Arabian Sea near uh, in Maharashtra where we have Mumbai High which has the 63% of uh, petroleum deposit. So now we have maximum petroleum deposit in the areas of Mumbai High. And then we have in Gujarat, Ankaleshwar and Kalori. We have thermal and nuclear power plants also, which are being used for the generation of the electricity. Now, if we talk about India is fortunate to have fairly rich and varied mineral resources, but these resources are unevenly distributed. As you have seen from the previous map, that all the resources, they are not available everywhere. We have these uh, minerals available at a particular region. So if you go in the area of the peninsular rocks, so we have good reserve of metallic minerals. We have coal over there. Then Rajasthan, we have non porous minerals found over there, especially the copper. K3 mine is there. And if you talk about the elevated plains of northern part of it, it's devoid of uh, minerals and it is basically used for the production of the crops. 
Now let's talk about the non-conventional energy resources. Now as we know that these uh, non-conventional energy resources are the resources which we have been using for the last few years. We have solar energy, we have wind energy, we have tidal energy, we have geothermal energy is there. If we talk about the solar and the nuclear energy, we have uranium and thorium which has been used to make the um, nuclear energy in our country. Then we have solar energy. Now, we are very lucky. We have, uh, India is a tropical and subtropical country. So, here uh, we have ample of sunlight which is being received so we can uh, we can have we can use this solar energy for the different purpose and uh, government of India is emphasizing a lot of using of solar panels in the in the village area and the rural area so that they reduce the usage of uh, kettle dung cake and the firewood. Then we have tidal energy which is being uh, generated by the tides of the ocean. So now we have such a big. Uh, coastline with us where we can utilize this oceanic water for the generation of the tidal energy. We have wind energy, Tamil Nadu, in Tamil Nadu, Jaisalmer, they have good uh, uh, wind energy farms where uh, we harvest the wind energy. We have biogas and we have geothermal energy also. Geothermal energy is the energy which is uh, which is obtained from the interior of the earth. To harness the geothermal energy from our country, we have two experimental projects. One is there in Himachal Pradesh in Manikaran, and the second one is there in Ladakh, uh, Puga Valley, where we harness the geothermal energy. Thank you.